Well, a lot of people never thought I would be a rapper. When, it was, when all my friends found out I was rapping, they were surprised. They was like, wow. Because I kept it to myself. I was rapping, I was writing a lot, but I never exposed myself. Some people was rapping in front of people a lot. I, I, I stayed to myself, kept it to myself. And that was even before, that was before Ultra Magnetic. He's known as Dr. Octagon. He's the Black Elvis. He is Dr. Doom. He is. Cool. I'm, we, we was we went to school. Me and Sad went to school together, but. We met at his house because it was by accident. Another dude took me up there. They had Mastermind Productions. They was producing um, KRS and all of them, but KRS was with another group called Celebrity 3. And um, I just went up there, it's called Mastermind Productions. Then we started Ultra Magnetic because we wanted to do an album, but we had to do it on the comp you know, the, on the, on the, under the, circumstances said his brother wanted to just do one group. I wasn't really rushing basically in music. I was um I was taking my time. Where a lot of people was rushing, they were rhyming and people face and you know, yo hear my rap, please listen to my demo. I was never like that. I was always like calm. I'm I'm not I wasn't rushing. I I, I took my time to watch what other people was doing. It was a it's, it was a long route because um, we was we had to shop tapes and stuff like that at that time. Back then, you know, we didn't have no lawyers soliciting. You know, we had to go through the grind, but we went through a lot of the grind. We was in the projects. We were we was recording under the circumstances of a lot of things. Um, people getting robbed, you know, drug dealers, murderers, everything. You know, from all that, it was good. And positive because we, after we came through all that, we um, we turned out to be a positive. Quarter band, Sam is on trombone. We blowing hard, back to back notes. Get with it. Take off your coat, meditate. Let your brain compel. Just think as the beat excel to your eardrum. Core cells to numb and freeze. We wrote about you know scientific stuff. And, but I had no idea that Ultra would expand worldwide. We were, we were just happy with just just we were just happy with New York. Not even knowing that people in Europe, people all over the country, like the group. So that was a big that was a big that was um like you said that was culture shock later. The way our deals were structured, we always signed one year packs like a baseball player, we always signed one year contracts. But we was always leaving the labels after one record. That that was kind of interesting for the group. We had a different label every year. I, I think the Four Horsemen album was one of the most properly promoted albums, you know, with the, you know, like you said, going with the run of the campaign, whereas the other labels felt that we didn't need to do that. Interviews with Sherry Carter, different things you saw. Like you said, you saw a video soul. You saw all the stuff that, you know, MTV, you know. I mean, back then, like you said, a lot of groups had uh, a home base, you know. You know, when you look at the Def Jam, you look at everybody. I think we were just wanting to see what was different. Back and forth, the same old rhythm that a baby can pick up and join right with them. But the rhymes are pathetic, they think they're copacetic using nursery terms, at least not poetic. On an educated base, intelligent wise, as the record regional Atlanta, Alabama, Savannah. I kick a rhyme like a board to Indiana, Missouri, Kentucky. Like, did call me Bucky. Rogers, I'm nice, I float a space while wow. Dr. Smith, I'm dope, your watch sparky loud. As I don't like a spitball, my slider and check back. The stadium's packed, bro. Your people should get back. And what is the plate? Yo, Jerry Grody. Pause. I felt like 
people started appreciating me being original, which 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 kind of brought a lot of groups out into a, a new wave. Like, you know, when the Neptunes came out, it was all about new records and making new beats, which people try to skip that. We was we was a part of the genre, you like setting the tone of making brand new records, you know, making we didn't have to say, well, we gotta use an old record. We don't say we we didn't wanna say that we have to rap over um, Ron Carter or something, you know, which is cool, but we didn't, we didn't want to be accepted to say, well, we can't make our own music. You know, I can't put something together myself, which I successfully done. But see, some people did visual, some people did visual, um, visual sex. You know, they put ladies in their videos and they said that was porn mixed with hip hop, which it was, but really porn mixed with hip hop is that I put porn on movies and stuff in my music and mix um, the music with the records. And you know, you hear girls and samples from porn and the records and stuff. That's what I was about. You know, even after that, then the girls are in the video with the, um, with the music. So I might have a sample with, you know, something from a movie, a girl moaning on my chorus. And, it sounds crazy, you know. Blue flowers. It's wonderful sitting by the pond talking. Oh. Is that your biggest album? Um, to to the pop world it is. To the pop world, um, because it opened up other doors. I mean, it just went into other sections of music. It went into rock, alternative, rap. That album was like four different dimensions. So the lyrical side, the, the music, the eclectic, then the so being so different, it's pop, it's rock. I mean, it was, it was even heavy metal to some sort. It was an octagon record, like eight sides. It had eight different areas to it. I mean, Automator in, was um, like more like, musically, you know, I played a lot of bass lines. I mean, it's funny though, Automator was there to more like a uh, composer, but I was there to add on a lot of stuff. Like I played a lot of bass lines, which people never knew. I, you know, I mean, Blue Flowers would have been naked, but I put the bubbly sound on top of it, the big bass line, and you know, I added on to what I heard that need, you know, that needed to be, you know, put on the record. So it was like me being there. Also, I added a lot of things to it. Everybody. Dr. Octagon, paramedic fetus of the East, reprise up from the church of the operating room with the strikes of force, scalpels since the Holocaust. I do indeed and agree, explore, meet the patients, back the rooms with the nurse with the voodoo curse. Holding up all his lights, standing at huge heights, back and forth, left wing, swing to north, east and south with blood pouring down your mouth. I come prepared with the white suit and stethoscope, listen to your heartbeat, delete, beep, beep, beep. Your insurance is high, but my price is cheap. Blue flowers. Blue flowers. Blue flowers. It's raining yellow. Blue flowers. Would you care to listen to any more? Octagon was like Mozart mixed with Bump, kind of, like just left field. Me and Automator was definitely at the head of everything, but Automator did the casting of, you know, who should come in on what. I recorded that up in San Francisco. We went up there and um, did that album, basically, in like a week. Really? Well, I was a fast writer anyway. I'm not like a slow writer. A lot of guys take maybe a month to do one verse and a month to do another verse. I, I write like three verses in like an hour, you know. You know, every time when you're in the studio, which is good, 
about recording is that um, it's therapy. You know, I always wanted to scream and curse. So, you know, instead of going out here taking it out on somebody else, it's good to go in the vocal booth and just scream and get it out. Um, you know, curse. It's like a form of therapy. And I, when I made Matthew, it was a form of therapy. It was like to feel good. Let me just get all this out of my system. You know, it's like going to a sauna, sweat. Like, and when I, the record was like all the held in, you know, impact of, you know, going through the record companies, different things and feeling different ways. It was me doing that record to get it out of your system. Like Elvis album also made me upset, um, you know, because when, when I signed with Sony, there was a lot of things told to me that was gonna be done. And then when I started on the project, it was like, when I was working on the album, it was like, you do it yourself, you pick out who you want. Then when I got to Philly, you know, I recorded it in Concha Hawking. When I got to Philly, you know, I, I picked up Roger Troutman to be on it. I liked it all that, and I had other people I wanted that I didn't get, but it was just that when I got there, it seemed to like pre-stage, because when I got there, it was like a lot of producers waiting for me, you know, and I didn't ask them to come there. You know, it was a weird scene when I got to Philadelphia, when I came to, you know, I recorded at Joe the Butcher's, you know, up in Philly. Studio 4. Yeah, Studio 4. So when I got there, it was like producers just waiting. When I got the plane, it was like a bunch of producers waiting. And it was like, it was like they was trying to push these people on what I was doing, you know. People might try to push producers on you, but sometimes a producer don't know the feeling of your emotion like you might make a beat like you might live out in texas or you might live in where well, sunny bubble sunny bubble berry you might live out in sunny bubble berry and you know i come out here from the bronx and i might have a different emotion and here you you're gonna play a sunny bubble berry beat but it ain't matching my emotion it's like I didn't came and I didn't saw somebody get robbed and do beat his wife up and whatever. My emotion of writing is not in Sunny Bubble there. But the person doing the beat is thinking like, hey, you know, I got a beautiful life. I'm planting garden seeds. You know, I'm mowing my lawn. And you like, I just got off the plane and my life is just whatever it is. You know, I'm like, I might have came from a different blizzard or something, you know, snow and sleep, you know, Eskimo, you know, my mind is on a different state of writing. And that's what a lot of producers don't understand. They, everybody always like, you know, well, I got a beat for you. I got the beat. I got the fire for you. But it's not that, it's not that. You don't, you know, you don't have the emotion. You don't have the emotion for me. So I had, a, I had run into that a lot. That's what made me become self-producing to get beats to match. That's where Matthew come in, is that I made beats to match the emotions of what I was feeling. Now, if somebody else did it, I could have rapped on other people's beats, but it would have not been so intense. Like Dr. Doom was matching the emotions, which people don't ever understand. They, a lot of people don't always have the emotional beat to go with the story that you write. It's like a horror flick. It's like if you see a horror movie and then you go see Friday the 13th, I mean, you go see Halloween, but there's no real Halloween music. Every time Michael Myers come out, it's some happy music. It's some Charlie Brown music playing. You know, you hear the Peanuts and Linus music playing behind Charlie Brown. So it's like, you like, that don't match. You know, when, when, when Halloween come out, the, the, the trailer, the soundtrack fits, you know, it fits the, whatever the movement of the, the movie is. And that's what you got a problem now. A lot of the movies is just picking soundtracks because they hot or they made by somebody that they could sell the movie instead of picking a track that fits the movie. They'll pick a track that don't fit the movie, but they're going by the artist's value. They're like, well, this is a hot pop record on the radio, but we're gonna throw it in behind Jason but it don't even fit Jason. It's just a part that 
it's just a hot record you know and that's a misunderstanding that's when you go to the movies and get confused that's why people don't go to the movies no more because if you notice back in the time all the movies like you know shaft and all that it fits the movie fits the scene like you know superfly that's the best soundtrack you know when you see that's the when you see black caesar that's the best soundtrack you know james brown records played at the right time and he did all the production but people want to throw movies together and throw you know a move a, a record from this person and that person but it has nothing to do with the movie I, I i i like i like the freedom i mean i've been under the conformed circumstances that it just makes me feel like it takes a lot away from you it takes a lot away from your career you know you being who you are i mean i like to be you know i don't like to make conformed records i think a lot of people you know you hear them all day the conformity but i felt like if you want to play an off-key bass line that's what you want to do but I, I like to match music my whole scenario and stigma of me is dark music anyway you know always you know we always made like dark stuff like dark soundtracks I mean, and, and, when, and when I do make something kind of light, it's still kind of haunted. If I rap on a love record, it sounds haunted to somebody. You know, if I rapped on a record with, you know, Diana Ross singing behind me, but it's gonna still sound, people will think it's still bugged out. They'll still think it has a, a dark element to it. You know, it's not like, you're gonna make a record where it's like, you know, you know, I'm not gonna make off an Annie or something. You know, you're gonna hear me, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow, just another. You know, I'm not gonna do that, but I'm gonna make a slow record, but it won't be in the element. It'll be in the element of what I'm doing. I toured with um, I toured with Dave Grohl, and Foo Fighters. I toured with um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I toured with um, you know, I, I toured with quite a few groups. I toured with um, Pennywise. I toured with Good Charlotte. I toured with um, you know, I did a lot of different tours with a lot of big groups. Green Day, you know. So it's like, I think I was the first rapper on the road doing tours with a lot of different types of bands whereas now a lot of these new guys are just waking up doing that you know you know certain venues i played that a lot of groups would never play i remember like when bb kings i remember nobody was going in there like i was in there it was like maybe like you said you know chuck berry whatever bands you have whatever the you know jazz bands but Rappers wasn't even playing in there. Even big artists, even big R&B artists. Like, but now when you, you know, I'm looking at the, um, when you look at the flyers now, you like, wow, they coming in there now? They coming in there? But back then they wasn't coming in there, you know, because people wanted to see a big, you know, people wanted to see intimacy, intimate shows, you know. I've been all around. I've been to Paris, Germany, Australia, um, Spain, you know, all of Spain, Barcelona, Madrid, um, up north, um, Denmark, uh, the top of the, you know, state, um, 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 Sweden, um, Morocco, um, Tenerife, you know, Canary Islands, um, um, the Netherlands, um, of course, I've been on, um, what's that, um, before you go, Auckland, that's like um, when you go in Australia, you know, that's like um, 
China. I've been over to Japan, Tokyo. This is all without, I've been, this is all without a record company. This is all without being signed. Like, I've been traveling for the last 10 years without, without a label. Other groups gotta do, you know, they gotta do, um, they sign the labels, they gotta do bars and they gotta do little parties to launch the, the artists coming out and stuff while I'm traveling to Tokyo, Spain, France, Barcelona, um, Australia, um, Germany. Like you said, I'm still doing stuff, like currently doing things and making records and, you know, staying active, you know. But that goes to show the longevity of my career as far as what I've done in the past. See, a lot of people don't have no past biography. They just came out pop matic MC from nowhere, you know, and they're like, they're known in an area or something, you know, they're just known maybe from their town. So that, that, that but it's, it's good if they prosper, but they didn't do no, you know, see back back in the days you had a meaning of a, a artist coming out. Like you said, like if Red Man came out, you know he came from um, EPMD, you know, he came from, the element, like Tim Dog came from the element. You know, everybody came from the element. Like a lot of people now don't come from like, they don't come from anywhere. They just pop up like a microwave. It's like you putting a new item in a supermarket. It's like you see a new, you know, you know Swanson was out for years, but you're trying to put like some new microwave chicken next to Swanson. You're like, okay, you buy for one night. You like, you like, oh, this is cool for about a couple months. Then it was, you know, you go back to the stores off the shelf. You like that, they don't sell that no more. That was like some one night campaign. You know, the new, the new whatever, you know what I'm saying? Same thing like Coke and Pepsi. People know what that is. But when you try to put like some new soda, you throw it in there. You don't know who that is. It's just, a, you know, that's what it is with rap. The same thing. They just... The brand is the brand, the brand. The brand is important. Cause this is a craze, you know, it's like, it's like anything that comes out, it's like the sneakers, everybody buy the Jordans. So if one rapper comes out, they become that rapper, so it's no originality, basically. Well, that trend guys, they're dead. Yeah, yeah, they're dead with the trend. So it's like, they don't have a, a, a you know, they don't have a long lasting image of who they want to be themselves. So, which is good for me. Right. It helps me better because when they all trying to be like that person, that one person, it's good because you don't got no competition to worry about. Back in the day, you had more to worry about because everybody was different. So you gotta be like, wow, I gotta find my area, my niche. But now, you know, 50,000 people be, be like one person, you like, uh, you, you have no problem. It's open, it just keeps your doors wide open. You know, it's funny, I've been, I've been recording both. I, I, did a, I did a brand new record, I'm, I'm working on, I did a brand new record that, um, brand new sounds and everything, and I did an album with samples, like the best of both worlds, but I'm not putting them together, they're separate. And then I got a project called A Couple of Slices, you know, where I worked with, Ray West, where I rapped on original beats. Then I did an album called Love and Danger out in Europe. Then I got another album I'm working on my own stuff called, you know, just, you know, Super Super Future. Super, my album is called Super Future. So I'm working on newer tracks that's brand new, you know, or, or galactic brand new, you know. But I'm, you know, you know, it's funny. I, I, I even leave, I even leave ghost clues out there. I got, I got records. I got a record with an artist that was great that passed away. That was a producer. That people would be shocked. Like a great producer, a good producer. That's gonna come out as a ghost. I got artists that um. um you know, I, I got records, what about the records I rhyme with people that they never put out? And the verses, you know, loose verses. Oh, see, the thing with me too, I'm a business person, but 
it's a time to make money and it's a time not to make money which, which a lot of rappers don't really know about really in general is that sometimes you gotta rhyme from the heart like one day I might come by your place and spit something from the heart but then again you spit certain things some people do charge money for certain things but I think a lot of rappers now which limited us like you said the jazz artists was that we didn't collaborate as much because we let a lot of people get in between us that don't even know nothing about rap you know like a lot of guys got a lot of people in between them that don't even know nothing about rap that me and you can't make a record together and you have that because everybody's trying to be so corporate that you lose your soul in making a record you don't feel like oh you know me and such and such met up but we naturally soulful so we should let's do some songs these guys can't even do that because they're so wrapped up into the corporate part of it that they you know they making a record like a robot now like you know well let me do the paperwork and then i can ro robotically come over and start my, start on my verse so it's not like they can rhyme and get on a song natural back in the days a lot of party groups was natural like sly stone and james brown all of them was probably natural these guys are stiff they can't they feel like a verse is only what you say it's your voice these guys feel like you know i gotta make every penny for every verse they don't know how to do a song natural they don't know how to make a natural with, with, with me i'm a natural artist i think a lot of these guys are not natural they program when you become programmed you make records you're, you're, you stiffen up because you you're only making records by the record company telling you when to go make it and when to start when to write or um the place to record it at and, you know it's program and you know flying vocals back and forth and these guys sound like they're making records together but they're not even seeing each other they're not even seeing each other when they make a record they're flying vocals in and out and they're not even you know they're not even sitting down ordering a pizza together I've, I've been through it all you got a lot of cats who see you and they're like yo we gotta do a track together when i see you man we gonna do it I'm, I'm, i can't wait to do it with you son and this and that when you really put it to the test you're like okay let's monday on let's do it let's get it done you start to see the the glitch and the, the chain and the bike start getting stuck you know yeah. what i'm saying it's like it's always like that with people you know so you got a lot of people you know I, I meet that type of character all the time you know you run into all types of characters musically and it's like you seeing a rapper all the time on the street like yo i'm fire i'm real fire you better take me and i'm fire i'm telling you nobody can't touch me I'm fire once I get in the once I'm, I'm just I'm treacherous fire but when you take him in the booth you say all right now finally I'm gonna take this dude in the booth you just see him lock up I've seen it all the time I see him I see him locked like he just locked his leg like what happened to fire man what happened to my man fire what happened to real fire that's fire right there is that fire fire can't spit shit huh that's that's what fucks me up like you know what i'm saying you like what happened to fire fire really is in there fucking up. <laughs> you, know you know when you hear a lot of rappers rap and they from a certain era you still hear like well they still in that mode of writing of that time you know me i'm still writing current and i think which which is good that only a few people made that made it across that bridge of lyrics of writing with the cadences of the future some some people didn't make that that cross they didn't cross that bridge to cross into which is good i think it was good that i had a a vocal cadence that was like in time in time it caught up to time it's in time it was always ahead of time but it caught up to time you know what I'm saying? Everything, man. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know. You know what I'm saying? I keep the pen. See that? See that? That's what's up.
pen is dangerous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people, they say they spit off the top. But when you piece a lot of stuff from the top, but let me tell you about off the top lyrics. When you spit from the top, it's like, you're just saying anything. Sometimes you just be like, wallpaper. <laughs> then you put another, my game is major. Like you just adding, you adding dumb shit together, yeah. you know, but some people think that's art. You think it's art. It's, it's cool, but sometimes it's not always just coming up with like, stacking right. shit on top of shit, you know. But it's not, it's not in the art of Mozart. Creative swag. I'm too much about my 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 swag. Allow me to reinvent myself Sit back and take my balls off the shelf Spalding for the swag, watch me enjoy my health Dr. Philadelphia pass the pills to build up wealth Come to your birthday party, I'm somebody else Sweet 16, legs so bony, man how you getting them little jeans? Swagger get the plaid shirt working Your girl on the skateboard flirting Fairfax High, okay you Washington Irving Stingray Corvettes a lot of rappers need chlorette.